how to prepare a rigid pipe patch. Be sure to read and follow the included operator's manual for specifications, installation instructions, safety precautions, and more. The rigid pipe patch installation checklist, referenced in the operator's manual, can be found on the side of every rigid pipe patch kit box. This checklist must be completed for every installation. Before beginning the patchwork, make sure all equipment needed is on hand and has been inspected and tested to ensure a successful patch. Confirm that you have the correct packer, equipment, and materials for the patching work. Securely tie your pull rope to the D-shackle on the back end of your packer. This will be used to remove your packer assembly after your patch is complete. Attach a rigid air push rod. Be sure all materials, equipment, and personnel are available and properly staged to minimize the time it takes to get the patch prepared and in place. If time runs out before the packer is inflated in place, the patch must be disposed of and the process restarted. Insert the packer inside the provided clear packer sleeve. The packer sleeve protects the packer from the resin and simplifies cleanup. The sleeve should extend approximately one inch past the front of the packer and approximately six inches past the back of the packer. The back of the packer is the side with the air connection. Fold the sleeve around the packer and securely tape the packer sleeve at the front of the packer. Wrap the tape around the metal end of the packer, down over the curve of the end of the packer, but do not cover the threaded connection. Wrapping the tape down over the curve of the packer end is important for proper retention of the sleeve in place. Secure the packer sleeve to the packer with the provided elastic bands doubled over every 12 inches. Using the correct elastic bands, doubling them over and properly placing them is very important to the function of the packer and patch. Wrap the tape around the metal end of the packer down over the curve to the end of the packer. Wrapping the tape down over the curve is important for proper retention of the sleeve in place. Securely connect a single air push rod and tape the connection. Perform a test insertion. The packer test insertion ensures the packer and equipment can navigate the pipe to the damaged section in the required time and be retrieved without damage. This increases the likelihood of a successful patch. By now, you've already located and cleaned the area you'll be patching. Carefully insert the packer into the pipe system. Monitor the amount of time it takes to insert the packer. Determine if it will be possible to navigate the packer and patch to the patch site before the patch resin hardens. Confirm that the packer is in the correct spot to apply the pipe patch. Do not attempt to install the patch without first doing a test insertion. Do not inflate the packer during the test insertion. Once your test insertion is completed and your packer is removed, replace your used packer sleeve with the new one provided. Mark the encroachment zones. Confirm that there are equal lengths of black rubber packer at either end of the patch. These are the encroachment zones. Encroachment zones are important for the proper installation of a patch. If the patch is too close to the ends of the packer, or in the encroachment zone, the end of the patch will not be held tightly to the pipe inside diameter and the patch may not work. See the specifications table in your manual for the minimum encroachment zone for each packer. The wet out process. Prepare the patch and resin only on the supplied table covering. Always wear safety glasses and the provided protective gloves when handling resin. Carefully open both resin containers. Pour all of Part A into Part B. Record the time that the resins were poured together. Securely replace the cap on resin bottle B and vigorously shake the container for at least a minute to thoroughly mix. Refer to the resin containers and SDS sheets for further information on proper handling and use. Pour the resin mixture onto the patch material, making sure to fully saturate it. Using your gloved hands, thoroughly work the resin into the patch. The patch should turn the yellow resin color. There should be no white areas. 
Enough resin is supplied to fully saturate the patch and then some. The excess resin can be left and allowed to dry on the plastic table covering. Do not keep the mixed resin in the container. It will start to heat up and may rupture or melt the container. Carefully insert the packer into the patch. Do not stretch or deform the patch. It is important to have the patch centered on the packer to reduce the risk of an improper patch. Confirm the patch is centered and the encroachment zones are visible at each end. Confirm that the patch is properly placed relative to any containment tube. At the front end of the patch, apply a doubled over elastic band. Repeat this every half inch until four elastic bands are in place on the front edge. Continue to place doubled over elastic bands every four inches along the remaining length of the patch. Place another four doubled over elastic bands half an inch apart from each other at the other end of the packer. The doubling over and correct placement of the elastic bands is important to ensure that the patch stays in place and does not move on the packer. Wipe away any excess resin off of the packer sleeve. Now that you've got your patch wet out and on the packer, it is time to change gloves. Using the information learned from the test insertion, insert the packer assembly inside the pipe system. The patch must be properly positioned prior to inflating the packer. Attach the pressure regulator to the air push rod or air hose. Pull the regulator knob and slowly turn it clockwise to inflate the packer to the required air pressure. Be sure to record the time at which the packer is inflated. Under normal conditions, the set time is 1 hour 30 minutes. While your packer is inflated and your patch is curing in the pipe system, now is a good time to clean up your working area. Dispose of the components in compliance with all applicable regulations. Contact your local waste management authority for more information. Full cure takes place at four hours under normal conditions. Deflate and remove the packer assembly. Once the set time has elapsed, depressurize the system to loosen the packer assembly from the patch. Record the time at which the packer is deflated. Do not depressurize the packer before the set time is complete. Using the pull rope, retrieve the packer assembly from the pipe system. Do not pull the packer assembly with the air push rods. Now, check your pipe patch with the inspection camera. Congratulations, you've successfully installed a rigid pipe patch. How to prepare containment tube. The containment tube is used for straight pipes when containment is needed. Determine the containment tube length. Be sure to cut enough liner to be able to cover from the front end of the packer, not including the packer ball, all the way to the back of the air fitting on the back of the packer assembly as shown here. Using sharp scissors, cleanly and squarely cut the containment tube to length. A clean square cut will minimize tearing while inflating. Place the packer in the middle of the width of the tube. Fold the edges of the tube up and tight to the packer. Securely tape the containment tube to the end of the packer. Wrap the tape around the metal end of the packer and down over the curve, but do not cover the threaded connector. Use the provided elastic bands doubled over individually every 9 to 12 inches to keep the containment tube neatly folded and secured to the packer body. If applying a patch less than full length, the tube can extend more than four inches underneath the end of the patch, but no less. Continue building out the packer as normal by installing the packer sleeve. When using containment tube, do not tape the containment or packer tube to the back of the packer. Only tape the packer tube to the red push